All right, so um, the first few, let me get to the end of this. All right, so problem number one, it says you have this, and there's one little misprint on it. It should actually be, so right now they have an X in there. It, that actually should be blank, which means what number would I plug in there that would plug in there that would make this equal to negative 24? So what times 6 would give me negative 24? So this should be a negative 4, just like that. <coughs> That's the answer right there. That's the answer. That's all you have to do. Okay? So let's look at number 2. It's done the same way. Uh, it's not F, though. It's G. Again, this one should have been written like this, where it's blank. Okay? So what do I have to multiply negative 10 by to get to 15? Sometimes it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to take this and set it equal to that. How do I solve for x? Yeah. Divide by 10. Negative 10. Good. So I get 15 over negative 10 which reduces to negative 3 over 2, or negative 1.5, however you want to write it. But that's the answer there. Okay. Problem number 3. And again, this should be blank here. So it's kind of hard. I know that some of you will sit there and stare at this and try and think through. Okay, if I plug in one, nope, plug in two, nope, plug in three. You know, you're figuring that out. Again, if you take this and set this equal to that, so I'm going to add five and then divide by three. So the answer to this should be three. Number four h at x. And what is g at x, f at x, h at x, what do they all mean? H. As what? h at x. It means the same thing as what? It means, uh, uh, it means the same thing as y. It's the same y equals. This is just functional notation. Okay, again, what number, what am I going to plug in here? Again, I probably could go through and try and reason through certain numbers, but I don't know if I can or can't. I'm going to do that. Uh, oops, it was too much. Okay, so subtract 14, divide by negative 8. Okay, so that's just saying, what do you have to plug in? Okay, this means the same thing as y, where so we're just using functional notation. It's a different way of writing it. Uh, and after that, so we go to number 5. We have this grid, we have a line that kind of does this, and it looks like they're counting by twos, and then counting by twos here, like zero, zero. Okay, so what they want to know on this one is we want to know what would I need to plug in for x, so which value of this would result in me getting 7. So 7's here, right? So this is, I'm going to make kind of a, the best I can, a box. And if I did it right, where does this look like this is hitting about? About 3? Okay, somewhere around the 3. So the function at 3, the function at 3 gives me a result of 7. Okay, what if you put 3.1? What if you put 2.6? You're all probably in about the same ballpark. Rom, so is it close to 3? No, sorry okay. about that. Um, so, on the test, if we just put 3 into the last, is that fine? I, I would probably have this adjusted to where you would be able to plug in to, it would, I would probably have the problem look like this and you need to fill in the blank. That's what I think I would do. 
six. Uh, then we have this line that kind of does this. And again, count my twos. And then we still want to know what the function at x that would be, yield the result of being seven. So seven's here. So again, I'm kind of drawn in a rectangle as I can. So this is horizontal, and then this comes down. What do you think? About four? And again, I'm not going to ask you to give me some decimal impossibility. So you make your best guess. So if you call it any, say anywhere from 3.5 to 4.5, you're probably in the right range. But again, I'm probably not going to give you a decimal unless we have a really accurate graph. And if we're using, it depends if we're using rulers or not. In, you know, in this case, I'm just trying to estimate it. I have a hand-drawn graph up there. Okay, do we feel okay up through number six? Okay, and again, it's a different way of thinking through these problems, but our preparation for y'all is really to move us along, and once you get to calculus, this type of terminology is used over and over and over again. Okay? Uh, next, we have this, f of x is equal to, they give us this equation to answer the following questions, okay? And then they also gave us a graph. Looks like that, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, looks like it crosses here at six. I have that drawn about right. How they have on the paper? Close. You think that's okay? All right. Okay. So let's try and answer the questions. Letter A says, "What value is x where y is greater than four? Okay. So what value of x is y going to give us a value? bigger than four. Okay? So here you're thinking this. Okay? I bring this over. This part of the graph here, this part of the graph here in the y direction, that's the up direction, is bigger than four. Did I say that appropriate? Let me say it one more time. With my graph, I'm looking for in the y direction when it's going to be bigger than 4. So as I'm going in the y direction, this is the y direction, as I'm going up the elevator, at this point I want to know where does this start existing? What x value is being plugged in in order for us to get there? And if you were to look at your grid and have this drawn, let's see, let's see. is it negative 2 about? Is that negative 2? About close, do you think? Yeah. Make that work? Okay, so I'm looking off the graph. So this is negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, and that's not there. That's, that's something else. And 6. So at this point on our graph, if I plug values, so if I continue to go this way, I go to negative 3. Is it going higher in the y direction? Yes. Negative 4 or higher in the y direction? Yeah. Number 5 higher in the y direction? Yeah. Negative 200 way up high in the y direction? Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? So, thank you. Okay. Do we need a escort or anything? No. Okay. It's for you, Josh. You did something bad. Blame me. Oops. Okay, so where would this graph be coming from and get up to that my graph in the y direction is larger than 4. Where would this graph, where would I go in the x direction? Where am I coming from in the x direction to get up to where my graph is bigger than 4 in the y direction? Ram. Round bracket on both sides. What is the value? Why, why am I not making this a square bracket? It's not equal to that 4. So this is the region here that gives me a value that's bigger than 4. Okay? 
Make sense so far? Feeling right about it? Again, it's different terminology. It's a different way of thinking. I think I'm creating an extra wrinkle in your brains, which is good. Don't let don't let anyone tell you that you're smooth brained. That means you have less surface area. Which could mean you might not be as smart. But you guys are very smart. You have lots and lots of ridges and crevices. Alright. So oh, number seven. Letter B. Letter B. Letter B. Um what value of x happens where y is less than or equal to 0? Okay? So we want y to be less than or equal to 0. So what is y going to be? What kind of number, positive or negative? Negative. Negative. So at this point, this graph will continue doing this. Agree? So at this point, this is now going to get my negative values. So I want to, in my x direction, I'm going to go square bracket, okay, 6, <coughs> bless you, all the way to infinity. That will continue to get our y value to be more and more negative. It's going down. Y. The letter Y. The letter Y. Y is vertical. On what values in the x direction will, so this graph continues forever, right? The x-axis, the y-axis, this is now all negative values. All these values are negative. They're less than or equal to zero underneath in the y direction. If I were to get the point, like if I went out here to 10, I'd get, uh, if I plug that in, negative 2. So 10, negative 2 is this point. What's not positive? What's my negative value? The y is negative. Values that are less than 0 are negative numbers. Letter C. Letter C. Um, we want values of x where y is in between 1 and 4. Okay, so we're looking vertically at the 1 and the 4. So I have a 1 here, right, and a 4 here. Okay? We're talking about that green portion of the graph. Got a little bit more to it, right? Okay. So this green portion of the graph gives me a y value between 1 and 4 because I have 1. So over here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Make sense? See where the green graph exists? So we have to figure out which x values are going to do that. Well, I know that uh, negative 2 will get me this value here. And then 4 on your graph, my graph's off a smidge. So the x values between negative 2 and 4 will give me values between 1 and 4. Why are these rounded brackets, not square brackets? Yeah, Rom? Not equal. Yeah, they're between 1 and 4, not equal to it, okay? So these are the y, these are the x values I'd have to plug in. So these are the x values I have to plug into my equation that would give me answers between 1 and 4 in the y direction. So if I were to go negative, negative 1.99999 and plug it in, that gives me a value between 1 and 4. If I were to take a value, like if I take 0, plug it in, I get zero minus, or 3 minus 0, which is 3. That's between it. If I plug 3.9999 in here, I'm going to get a value between 1 and 4 in the y direction. And then, oh, there's two letter Cs, huh? I guess that's supposed to be a letter D. What is the domain of this graph? 
Are there any values that, if I were to have draw, drawn this entire line, does it ever, do I have to ever pick up my pencil to stop my graph? No. So what's the domain? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative to positive infinity, okay? And that's the front page of this. Okay? All right, let's go to the back side. I'm going to try and duplicate those graphs the best I can. Obviously, your graph is going to be a better picture than mine because yours is not hand-drawn. So, oh, shoot. Am I kind of close on your graph? So negative one, negative one would be about the vertex. Zero, zero crosses. Negative two, zero crosses. Am I good? All right, so letter A. We want to find the function at negative three. So negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay. So if you look on your paper and you come up, what does it appear it's at? Four. Four. Not on mine. Look on yours. Negative one, negative two, negative three. I think it's two. Wait, like it's between two and three, it comes up between. So if I had on the graph, if I go to negative 3 and go up, this is happening at 3. Okay? Sorry about that. I just couldn't see it. Man, even with these new cool new glasses, I still can't see. Man, let me tell you. Uh, letter B, the domain of this. Does it appear that if I go this way forever, my graph is going to keep going way up? And if I keep going this way forever, my graph is going to continue to keep going way up? And somewhere in the middle, it goes below the line. But do I ever have to pick my pencil up? No. So my domain goes from negative to positive infinity. Okay? The range might change a little bit. So if I'm on an elevator, what's my lowest value I have in the y direction? Negative 1. Do I equal it? Yeah. Yep. And where does this elevator go now? Infinity. Done. It's pretty high, yeah. It's pretty high. All right, letter D. The interval in which the function at x is positive. So what does that mean as far as our graph goes? What does a positive value mean? Positive value of our graph mean? Above zero. Above zero. So this is positive here. Is there another region that's positive? By above negative two. Yeah, good. This is also positive over here. What happens in between? Negative. It's a negative value, right? And at a certain point, it's zero. But So that's what's taking place up here. So what I'm going to do is this. Where is my graph positive? Okay, so in the x direction, I'm going to come from negative infinity and get all the way up to right here. What is right here? Two. Negative. negative two. Do I include it? No. No. If I include it, that's zero. Okay, where else do I include? Uh, zero. Zero to where? Zero. zero to infinity. Awesome. Okay. And then... 
Letter E says, where is this, the interval where it is increasing? Okay, now, you remember we talked yesterday, increasing is a little different than positive. Increasing means this, and this is the calculus that's taking place on this problem right here. Okay, if I were to draw a whole bunch of lines like this, these are actually called tangent lines because they touch the graph once. If I were to find the slope of all of these lines starting, so I'm going to put one slope in there that's not going to work for us. This slope here, that's a horizontal line which has a slope of zero. But as soon as I start going this way, they start having a positive slope. So where does this have an increasing value on this graph? From where? Where am I starting? Negative infinity. Negative what? Infinity. Negative 1. Where? Infinity. Okay, why is this not a square bracket at negative 1? What's happening at negative 1? It's horizontal. It's horizontal, which has a slope of? Zero. zero. Yes, Ron? Okay, so I said negative infinity. Negative infinity, it's decreasing. These all have decreasing slopes as you come to right here. Then it gets to a zero slope. So when you're talking about... Um, Increasing means that it's going the this line right here or a graph is going to going to the upper right. Yeah, and so when you're talking about increasing, you want us to use the y-axis or the x-axis. You're using the x-axis. Which x-axis values are giving us a value that's going to create a uh, an increasing slope, which means a positive slope. Well, we're reading uh, okay. So this is actually the calculus to the problem. Sorry, I'm teaching you guys some calculus and algebra. Dang it. Just can't sleep right anymore. Okay, so 80, we got everything there, right? Yep. And I know a lot of you had problems on this, so hopefully you're jotting down information that you feel good about. Okay, number nine, I'm going to try and draw this graph the best I can. It looks like it's at, uh, is that zero, two? Down here? Yeah. And then one, two over here. And then one, two over here. Is that right? Yeah. And these are straight lines. Agree? Anyone know what kind of graph this is? Anyone know what kind of graph that is? I just didn't know. The one before is actually a parabola. So second degree, so x squared. This is an absolute value graph. Okay? Absolute value graph. All right. So and you, you're not really expected to know that, but not yet, but we'll get there. So letter A, what is the function at negative 3? That's 1. Sweet. B, domain. It's going forever that way. It's going forever this way. So the domain. So negative infinity to infinity. At, for... A good amount of problems that we will work on, you'll have negative, positive, infinity domains. We'll get to a point where they'll get goofy. But I'll let you know. Goofy! No, sorry. Uh, range. Where is this elevator starting from? Negative 2. Does it include it? Yes. Yes, it does. Where is this elevator going to? Infinity. Infinity. D. Where is the function at x, where is it positive? What does it mean if it's positive? What is it above? Zero. Zero on which axis? x-axis, x okay? So here, let's use a better color than that. So both of those offer as positives, okay? So what does that mean? Where in the x, where is it coming from in that x direction? To what? Negative two. Negative two. Include it? No. No. Why? Because if you include negative two, it's, a, it's zero. Why is it two and not three? Oh. Actually, your answer is partially right on this. If I include negative two, this is zero. Negative two, zero, which is not positive. Yeah, is there... it's not positive. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm... And then where's it going for two? 2 comma infinity. 
So this is where is the graph above the x-axis. Letter E. Letter E. For where is it increasing? So this is where does the graph, and this one's harder to see because it's all straight lines. So where does this graph start going to the upper right? Where in the x direction? No. Where in the x? Where in the x? Zero. There you go. And it goes to infinity. So starting right here, this is creating us to have a positive slope. Ooh, that's kind of heavy. Heavy Debbie. All right. And I think we can go through 10 through. Wait, just one more second. Okay, I'd probably say the answer. So problem number 10, we're plugging 3 in from x on the f at x1 because f goes with f. So that's, is it 3? Yeah. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 9, correct? <laughs> say what? Yeah. So f at x, f at 3 is... Which is six minus which is no, no. no because it's not three f it's function at three it means what are you plugging in for the variable to get that okay number eleven I'm gonna get two times negative one which is negative two minus three which is negative five so number eleven the answer is negative five number twelve it's now g at zero so I'm gonna use the next equation so zero squared is zero. 0 plus 1 is 1. So number 12, the answer is 1. Number 13, g at 3. So 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. Number 13, the answer is 10. Number 14, 2 raised to the 0 power is 1. 1. Yes, let's go. A number other than 0. 0 to the 0 is undefined. Any other number to the 0 power is 1. 1. Because the natural log, which is the ln button on your calculator. Do you times anything raised? Do not times it by zero. You're raising it to the zero power. Okay, h at three. So two to the third power, which is two times two times two, is eight. Oh. Number 16, we go back to the f equation. I'll plug in negative three. So two times negative three is negative six. Negative six minus three is negative nine. Number 17, I'm using the G equation. So negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Number 18, I'm using the H equation. So 2 to the first power is 2. Good. And then number 19, I'm using the F equation. So I have 2 times 2 minus 3. So that's 4 minus 3, which is 1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that assignment. So make sure your name is on it. Hand it on in. Yo. Yes. Freddy. Graphing linear functions number three. Okay. Shh. Graphing linear functions number three. Okay. So, how how do you think something might be a linear function? What's the big key word in there? Line. Line. So. If you were looking at a graph and it was a straight line, do you think that would be an okay clue to say it's probably a linear function? Yes. Does that make sense to say something like that? Yes. Um, what about if I was looking at some points on a graph and they all appear to be a straight line? Could you say that might make linear equations? Yes. Good. Sure. Okay. If we had points that all kind of fell onto a straight line, that could make a linear function. Um, Group thinking. Yeah, just think about it. There's a lot of things that could create a linear function. So you could have these. Well, let's choose something different in yellow. So straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. What do you think? Would that all work? What about if I had plotted data like I had done a science experiment? My data kind of looked like that. If I plotted it, look straight enough. Will our data be off a little bit from time to time? Yeah, there's human error that does take place. Okay, But for the most part, you could probably say this has a 
Nice positive <laughs> correlation linear equation. Um, what if I have just two points? How many lines can I draw through two points? One. Exactly one. So you need two points to define a line. So those are just some things about lines. Okay? Um, now, number one, does number one appear to be linear or not? No. Yeah. Not. Everyone feel good about number one? That yeah. is not linear? Yeah. Okay? It didn't fall under the straight line category, did it? No. Okay? What about number two? Straight line or no? Straight line, yes. It seems to be. I feel pretty comfortable. So, nonlinear number one, linear number two. Well, you could say that just looks like a straight line. This has a curve in it. X axis twice, this one could, yes, technically. So, so it wouldn't work to be a line. All right. So then we have these types of things. So we want to see if they're linear. So some ways we might choose to say it could be linear is I could plot these points. So 0, 3, and 2, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then 427, 427, that's way up there. And 681, I gotta get up on, onto the roof. But like, same multiple, so so let's see, two. So is that that all grow evenly? Yeah. So I add two each time to get to those, and then from here to here, I, that goes up by what? Times by three. Times by three. Yeah. Times by three. Times three. Times three. Times three. Oh. Wait, so does that mean it's linear? Yes. 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 I don't know. Is it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Shh. Let me ask you this. The slope, using a new term, the slope of a straight line, does it always stay the same? That makes sense? The slope of a straight line would always be the same. So if you're on a line, you would go up a certain amount and right a certain amount, or down a certain amount and right a certain amount, or down a certain amount and left a certain amount, or up and left. You know, there's, there's different ways to do it. So do you feel that this graph is growing appropriately, or do you think it's doing this? Is it curved? I think it's doing that. Yeah. I mean, think about this. Are these growing real fast? This, is this growing a lot faster? Yes. Like, from here to here, it's grown six. From here to here, it's growing 19. From here to here, it, it's like way more than 19, right? So this is not linear. This is not linear. I just stated that. I just did. You just said, does the slope have to stay consistent? You said, yes. So if the slope were to stay consistent... Here, it's looking great, but here it's growing much faster from term to term. Like the eighth term is 8, 243. That's way up there. Yeah. So does the bottom have to grow by 2, too, or is it just like if it's It would have to grow by, by probably by the same exact amount each so time. So the top grew by 2 and the bottom grew by 5? Yes, that would be okay. That would be okay. Wow. But it's just because it's growing so much faster now on the bottom that that's not, it's not linear. Yeah. Uh, how do you know what faster is? It's just, it's getting steeper. So, like, if I put 8 in, I would get 243, which, so, this is growing pretty slow. Going 2, 4, 6, 8, 8. But think about how fast it's growing. It went here, then here, then I'm way off the ceiling. I can't even make my grid big enough to encompass this value here. 8, 243, 8, 243. We're on the air conditioning unit on the roof, right? So it's growing real fast in the Y. It's changing, but it's changing real fast. So like between each of these terms, this is not. these need to have a, a constant rate between them in order for it to be linear. So with that known, let's do this. Wow. Okay, so... For it to be linear, it has to grow by adding, not by a linear rate. 
Ooh, that might be, might be a good thing. Good, let's think about that. So this is growing by 10 each time. So I like that. Does everyone like that? Growing by 10, that seems to make sense. And then it's decreasing by 4 each time. Linear or not? Linear. I think it's linear. Okay? This is decreasing at the same rate over here. This increased at the same rate, but this decreased. So it's okay to increase on one and decrease on the other. So being that everything's the same rate, you know, you got 10, 10, you're adding 10 each time or subtracting 4 each time, I think this has got to give us linear. This one, the top grew by 2s each time, but the bottom did not add or subtract. So Ron might be on some same multiplication. All right. Ooh, what are these? I forget. Oh, they want to decide if these are linear or not. Linear or not. So, one thing to check. This one, linear or not. This one, I will tell you, both of those are linear. So let's take a look if we see any differences. I happen to have an x on both sides. I could move the 1 3rd x over on number 5 by adding it, and I'd get 4 thirds, 4 and 1 3rd x minus 7, right? On the next one, I could move the 2 fifths x over, and I could move the y value back over. So both 5 and 6 are both linear. Number 7, if I were to FOIL this out, I'd come up with y squared. Y times Y. Okay. So if that takes place, this is not linear because now I have something that's squared. Yeah. Okay. So the big clue here is my Y value is to the first power and my X values, even though I have multiple of them, are both to the first power. On this one, that's to the first, to the first, to the first. That's the only even if I add it over, yeah, so my x and y's are both to the first, and nothing's a denominator, like the x isn't in a denominator. <coughs> Though I have a fraction on both, my x is not part of the denominator, okay? But on this one, if I were to start mul multiplying this out, I'd get <coughs> y squared with more information. As soon as I got to the y squared, boom, not. What do you think's happening here? These are being multiplied together. So then, how would I get rid of this? I'd have to divide everything by x. Now I'd get an x in the denominator, so that's definitely a not. So, the x and the y's both have to be raised to the first power. The x and the y's can't be in a denominator. So, linear, linear, not, not. <coughs> I'm all in the back. I think I got enough time to get through. Quite a bit. If not, we'll cover the rest tomorrow. Discrete or continuous? Discrete. Let's see. Do we have an answer here? Nope. Okay. <coughs> Discrete or continuous? Hmm. Continuous means I don't have a stopping point on my graph. Meaning, when I made my graph, it did not have, I did not have to pick my pencil up to hop over a point, or I didn't have to pick up my pencil or pen to move to a different location. I could draw the whole thing. Okay? Discrete. Discrete. We'll come back to it. We don't have an answer yet for it. I mean, with continuous, mean we're not stopping when we graph it. So, like, this would be a continuous graph. Okay, it's not linear, but I didn't have to pick up my pencil. Discrete, does discrete mean I have to pick up my pencil? I don't know, maybe we'll get to that. We don't have an answer yet. What is the independent variable? What is the dependent variable? Okay, independent goes with the domain. Determine if the domain of the function is discrete or continuous. If independent goes with domain, which is x values, which is also called inputs,
then the dependent must go with the what? What would the dependent values go with? Y values. Okay. We also call X values domain. We call Y values range. We can call these output. And then the determinant of the domain of the function is discrete or continuous. Oh, this might help us. So if we went to our other graphs, remember how I had said the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity? That would be continuous. Discrete. Does the domain have breaks? Okay, did I have to stop, pick my pencil up to shift directions? <clears throat> the cost to enter a haunted house depends on how many people are in your group. The cost to enter a haunted house depends on how many people are in your group. So if it costs you $10 for one person to go in, but you brought 12 people and it only costs $100. Change a little bit. Okay. So as our value continue, so what is the independent variable? Number of people. That's your independent, which is your x value. The cost answer and the cost is your dependent value. How much does it cost to go into the haunted house? It depends how many people came with you. Okay. The amount of money made out of pumpkin patch depends on the temperature during the day. I'd say, let's see, determined domain is discrete. I'd say continue, this is, should be continuous. Okay. All right. I will pause there. As for, for tomorrow... As for tomorrow, I think you should work on page 71 and 72. Get a start on it. That doesn't mean it needs to be done. Start it. I'm not marking it off in the beginning. Have a great day, everybody.